All right, Mr. Allen and River Dog Jenny here again today. Uh, we're gonna do a little more math. A lot of math went into this whole setup you see behind me here. Um, so we're gonna cover how I figured out how much concrete to order uh, when we were building this deck behind me. Because not only did we do normal footings like you do for a deck, we actually made a concrete beam because it is often submerged in water whenever the river floods and we didn't want it to uh, rot out the main structure or anything like that. So had to do a bit of calculating and volume and whatnot uh, since we're gonna cover here today. All right, Jenny? Okay, cool. All righty, so Jenny, you're standing a little bit past where the beam is, but right underneath here, there you go, you can see it right there. We have this concrete beam that we poured uh, it runs the entire length of the deck. Isn't that right, Jenny? Yes, it is. Uh, and then on top of that, we have a two by six so we can screw all the joists to that. And then they do what's called cantilever over. It hangs out a little bit further. All right, so this beam that's underneath here runs the entire 20 foot wide deck. It is eight inches wide and it goes 12 inches into the ground. Beneath that, we have four more cylindrical footings. I'll draw a diagram for that. Sound I'm born, Jenny, already. All right, Jenny. Should we get to the math? We got a rectangular beam. We got four cylindrical footings and uh, we got the dimensions required. All right, so we have our diagram with all of our dimensions of this concrete beam that we use as a part of the structure for this deck. So all of our joists are going to be sitting along the top of this beam here, right? So it's all running underneath right around there on the deck, okay? And then all the joists cantilever over it and they hang over uh, about two three feet over that I can't remember exactly what I did but um, this is all about calculating how much concrete we need for this thing so I'm going to be figuring out some volumes here right so I've got a uh, an eight inch wide cylindrical footing that's 42 inches deep well my formula for the volume of a cylinder is just v equals well the base is a circle right so pi this is a little hard to look at my camera and do it, so I'll just do it here. Pi, my radius, if my diameter is eight, my radius is four squared. So that is equal to 16 pi for that part. Um, and then it's gonna be multiplied by my depth of 42 inches. All right. And now since this is an application problem, I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in my calculator here. So I have 16 times pi times 42 as I already have worked out, pi r squared times my height of that cylinder, and that is 2,111 inches cubed. All right, 2,111.15, so on and so forth, inches cubed, right? All of this is in inches right now. So we do wanna keep track of our units. Now, how many of those cylindrical footings do we have? I count four. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply that by four and I'm gonna get 8,444. So times four gives me 8,444.601, so on and so forth, inches cubed. And those for, are for all of my footings. Okay, so that's one aspect of this. Now I gotta figure out that beam, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and divide this up. Well, how do I find the uh, volume of a, of, of a rectangular prism? That's what we've got going on there, right? It's a rectangular prism. Well, that's just gonna be length times width times height. So I can do 12 times eight times 240. Let's see what we get. 12 times eight times 240. And that's gonna give me 23,040. That's inches cubed, okay. So we're getting somewhere. Well, what can I do with these two wonderful volumes? I think I can just add them together. Boom, back over the TI-84 plus. So plus, and then I'm gonna go up and add in that one right there. Hit enter and boom, I've got 31,484. All right, so 31,000, so total, I'll block that off, total volume. Uh, let's see, 31,484 point six, so on and so forth, inches cubed. All right, I like it. Now, I know many of you probably haven't ordered concrete before, but uh, ordering concrete from a truck is done in the cubic yard. If you're gonna go to Menards for something like this, 
uh, which is what I did in this case, you're gonna order it by a bag, which is in cubic feet. One bag is equal to half a cubic foot. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna scooch some things over a little bit and bring in a new dry erase board here. So I've got a couple more handy. All right, so one bag equals 0.5 feet cubed. All right, so that means that I need to then convert this guy, this guy into cubic feet if it's gonna make sense. Well, how do I convert to cubic feet? Well, one, cubic foot is, if we think of it in inches, a cubic foot is a, a cube with all my dimensions being right the same if it's a cube, which would be 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches because a cubic foot is one foot by one foot by one foot. Well, what's 12 times 12 times 12? I'm gonna pop over to the TI-84 for that. 12 times 12 times 12, boom, 1,728. So in one cubic foot, we have 1,728 cubic inches. One foot cubed equals 1,728 inches cubed. Hmm, so how am I gonna convert? Should this number that I have here become a smaller numerical value or a larger one when I'm converting to cubic feet? Well, since there's a whole bunch of cubic inches in a cubic foot, that number should become smaller. I'm gonna take this particular number here and I'm gonna divide it by how many cubic inches are in a cubic foot. So let's do 31,484.6, so on and so forth, over 100 or 1,728, and we'll get our cubic feet. Back over the TI-84, divided by, oops, sorry, not that. I'm gonna take this number, divided by 1,728. Now I've got my cubic feet, okay, so we have 18.22, so on and so forth, cubic feet. Remember children, when we're calculating these things, hashtag YORO. All right, so now that I've got that, how do I translate this into bags of concrete? Well, how about I take this particular number here and I divide it by how many cubic feet are in each bag of concrete? If it takes one bag to give me half a cubic foot, it would take two bags for a full cubic foot. Perhaps you see I could just multiply this number by two or divide it by 0.5. Either one would be mathematically equivalent. So now I'm gonna have my final answer divided by 0.5 or multiplied by two, whoops. All right, and although we could have just multiplied and gotten 36 in our head from uh, 18, um, I did wanna have it in the calculator for a particular reason. So this means I have 36 point four four bags now here's the thing with these cylindrical footings usually they're going to fill in some voids of the earth when you dig them out because when you dig them sometimes dirt collapses and all that stuff so these aren't really perfect cylinder cylinders they could be kind of oddly shaped right we're just digging them out of the ground i'm not i'm not forming them up in some fancy beam right in there or some fancy thing it's just dirt, okay, and it fills those voids. So perhaps we might need a little bit more concrete than what we actually calculated, right? It's not gonna be exactly that. Nature uh, does things, okay? So oftentimes in these situations, we might add in 10%. So I'm gonna take this number and I'm gonna multiply it by 1.1. This would take the original 36 bags and add in 10%, which would put me at right about 40 bags. So when I order this, I would go with 40 bags. Now remember children, numbers don't lie, but numbers are also only as good as your measurements. When I actually did this particular thing, I over dug this beam a little bit lower than I had intended. And I ended up needing quite a bit more or a little bit more concrete. We ended up being short about four bags in this whole thing because I over dug it. Um, so I had to send Aubrey out to, to swing by and grab a bunch of bags of concrete. Um, but yeah, so there you go, calculating wonderful volumes and converting it into usable units uh, when you're ordering things from Menards or from a concrete place. Remember, Mr. Allen, I did help you dig those holes for those footings and help you pour that concrete. It was an all-day job. You still never paid me for it. 
Actually, Mr. Busoni, I paid you in an Alpa store taco dinner from El Sombrero down the street. I'm pretty sure that's a solid payment for a full day's labor of concrete and digging. Maybe not. I think I got the win on this one. All right, so that's it for this episode of Math in the Wild with Mr. Allen Riverdog Jenny. I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit about volume and how to convert and get the proper amount of concrete for what is a pretty solid structure now, that rectangular beam that we poured and then all of our footings underneath it. Does that sound good, Jenny? All right, I think she's done with this. America, Freedom, Rock and Roll, and Costco. Right, Jenny?